in the world of uh, social media and, and information, today everyone just wants to be entertained. Even with knowledge and information, everyone wants to be entertained. No one wants to do hard work. Everyone wants to make money easily or attain an expertise easily and quickly. Now, maybe one or two or three individuals, if, if that was the case, maybe yeah, it's, it's, it can be overlooked. But a, a, umma, a bulk of the ummah to do this, that's disaster. That's a crisis. So, for example, you have people who want to educate themselves and empower themselves by a few minute clips of talks and lectures. <clears throat> those, those go viral. But if you have one hour, two hour lectures or talks, people don't listen. Can you imagine the crisis in 20, 30 years time? Imagine those people, how less knowledge will they have? Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, just this topic I'm covering in how many weeks? Three weeks, and I'm each week an hour and a half. Last time when I covered it, I covered each of these topics maybe three months, and each time I covered it, they were three hours long. So I've reduced it to what? Those who will listen, how much will they listen in on on social media? They might not listen all of it. Most likely they listen 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe 50 minutes and that's it. Right? And others, they just want to listen to the clips. <laughs> 30 seconds, 40 seconds clips and that's it. How much will they learn? Which, which will transform them as a human being, as a Muslim. Which will bring results and fruits for themselves, for their families, for the society at large. Yeah? It will be so less. So this is a disaster. Allah is a disaster. And that's why sometimes I intentionally prolong the class. As long as I can, like prolong it. Because Allah this development, this tarbiyah of your nafs, tarbiyah of your hunger, tarbiyah of your thirst, tarbiyah of the sitting down on the floor, tarbiyah of concentration of the mind. And that's where the transfer, transformation takes place. And obviously I have a theory which I said to so many brothers before, and that is the actual tarbiyah is not done by information, the actual tarbiyah is done by? Huh? Is done by what? No, it's done by something in the middle. Huh. Taking part. Yeah, enduring, but there's something more deeper. <clears throat> no, the, the, okay, let me give you a uh, riddle. It's done by when you sleep and then wake up. Uh, in other words, the actual tarbiyah and transformation takes place when you're in the class, and the class is so long, your brain in, becomes tired and it goes to sleep. It switches off. Then your subconscious starts to take it in. So you're awake, your eyes are open, your brain, your conscious brain is not taking anything in. Your subconscious begins to take everything in. And then you, you have a rest and you wake up <laughs> and all the information was sucked by the subconscious. Eventually when you go back and read it and you come back to class, keep doing it, your subconscious builds and grows and grows and grows and then that eventually changes your character. What the done? It's a theory and it works. Basically, the real transformation takes place at the subconscious level, before the conscious level. Yeah. So, for example, you wanted to change one, then you change. One brother came to me, for example, and he said, I said, look, lectures are good, but you should, you should attend classes. I, conferences and these things, going, watching, on, watching online stuff is good, but that's not how you study, that's not how you develop, that's, that's not how you empower yourself. He disagreed with me. <coughs> so he said, look, he said, he, he said I'm a proof. I'm a proof. I go, how? He goes, I listened to one of the lectures on YouTube and it changed my life. 
All your answer be. I if I answer, all your answer be. <laughs> I said to him straight on the spot. I said, no, you changed before that. At the subconscious level. Write that down. At the subconscious level, you already changed. But it was not at the conscious level. That lecture needed to bring the subconscious into which level? That's it. It was just a barrier and the barrier was broken by the lecture. Khalas. Not that you changed at that moment and transformed at the moment. That tr change and transformation took place long time before maybe. Or maybe a day or two before. And subconscious doesn't change in instant moment. It changes gradually. Conscious can change instant moment. But not the subconscious. It changes gradually. Why? Because at the bulk of it, who you are is at the subconscious level, not at the conscious level. I'll give you an example. Someone gives an inspiring talk on donations, they show videos and all of this, and it moves you, and it's like, I've got 100 pounds, forget Bismillah, what am I going to give 100 pounds? And you just give it. It doesn't get to your heart, alhamdulillah. But maybe when you go home, maybe like, ah, oh, I'm going to go out to work. And I have to give that away. But maybe nothing, you don't feel anything. Whichever way, <coughs> you give it. This was conscious or not conscious? Conscious. You were away. You know exactly what you're doing and gave the 100 pound away. Can you give the 100 pound away every day without that emotional talk? Unless you've transformed your subconscious. There you go. Unless you've transformed it at the subconscious level. I subconscious has accepted that you're going to give what? 100 pounds whenever you donate. On monthly you're going to donate 500 pounds. Khalas. Donate here, donate there. But it has to come from here first. Subconscious. So conscious can immediately change. But that will not be long term. It will be just instant emotional movement, it will not last. What will make you last is what what are you or who you are at the subconscious level. Is that clear? So I intentionally before, I don't know if anyone used to come to my, when people used to come to my classes before, my classes used to be long, three, four hours long. Everyone used to complain with feet aches, leg aches, back aches. <laughs> but those brothers today are producing, they <laughs> producing the most fruits. Yeah? Though they are producing the most fruits fruits in society. Why? Because their subconscious took the development, not the conscious. Yeah? So now if I prolong the lectures and the classes, you know what I'm doing, yeah? <laughs> if you fall asleep, don't worry, but I'll wake you up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Same with the wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala develops people at the subconscious level. Same with the wahi. Same with the coaches and the mentors. They develop people at the subconscious. It's very subtle. It's very subtle. Yeah? It's a gradual change, gradual development. And then boom, one day, it's face to face, front of you, and then you have to make the choice. Should I change, should I, should I transform, or should I not? And that transformation is the real transformation. When it comes from the subconscious first, and then it, it reflects at the conscious level. So when you watch those videos or hear the lectures or read books like this, <coughs> you don't go to training, you don't develop, self, uh, develop yourself, you don't um, let the subconscious grow and widen and, and become deeper and healthy and wealthier, and more independent, more confident, more competent, more empowered, then your conscious level will, will, will depend on that subconscious. And depending on that, that's how high or low you will be. Most of us, sadly, we do not even want to read a book. Yeah? We don't want to even listen to lectures. 
all study and go through tough discussions at the intellectual, uh, philosophical, or, or practical level. Yeah, this eventually will produce people with brains which can only take at the surface level, right? And those who are developed and empowered at the subconscious level, they will lead. They will lead, and they will lead your children, yeah, and your nephews and nieces. So we really need to change our environment, our culture in our houses. We really need to change our environment, our culture in our houses. So we really need to show our uh, kids and nephews and nieces that we are studying for hours, two, three hours. We are reading a book. We are planning. We are executing that plan, whatever we planned in our notebooks or in our diaries. They need to see these things. They need to be given a book. They need to see a library in their house. Yeah? And I have this statement that everyone says to me, and I literally want to, if I, if I had a cold bucket of water next to me, I'd you know, pour all over them, that cold bucket of water, just to wake them up from there, and a bubble. They always say this to me, when I ask them to read, they always say, I can't read. Or, if I read, I fall asleep. <laughs> This is the, the normal amongst our youth. Now, saying that statement, in order for you to solve the problem, it's not a problem. If you say that statement, I can't read or I fall asleep, in order for you to solve that problem, it's not a problem. That's like going to a doctor and saying, I'm ill, I've got this problem. The doctor then prescribes you medicine and you go and you take it. That's not a problem. Without knowing the problem, you can't solve it. So that's not a problem. What is a problem is feeling proud of it. So the person who says in front of me, they say what? I can't read. And they say, you know, yeah? smile and a big chest out. I can't read, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You can't read and you got a big smile. You can't read and you got a chest out as if you're a champion, like a boxer. No, you can't read. Have that regret. And then, it's not like you cannot read, you're unable to read. It just is about effort creating the environment culture in your house or amongst your friends. And then learning and studying. Create that culture in your house amongst your friends. And then training and development. Empowering. Making money. Building institutions. Have those things in your heart and your mind and work for them, work around them. 